Hey everyone, so Mortal Kombat 1 is officially out. Well, I should say it's officially out for the people who have bought the more expensive edition, um, like I did. Uh, no comment on this business practice. I think that ho deserves a whole other rant on its own, whether it's like um, a good thing that you get a game a week earlier if you pay more, whatever. We're not here to talk about that. We are here to talk about Mortal Kombat 1 and celebrate its release because, man, I've been waiting for a new MK game. So yeah, there's going to be a ton of MK1 content on the channel going forward, basically focusing on characters, online gameplay, guides, and the like. So if you are ready for all of that, do subscribe and give this video a like as well and turn on post notifications because I'm going to be helping people or trying to help people out quite a bit because... Yeah, I think there are some useful tips which people coming into fighting games or coming into the series should know about. Getting into the topic of today's video, this is going to be focused on how to learn a character. Essentially, if you jump into training mode, you pick someone, like I picked Melina, you have no idea what this character is all about. All I know about her is what I've seen in the gameplay trailers. How do you go about figuring out what's good? what you should use and what you shouldn't use because you look into the move list there is like a ton of stuff here there's a ton of special moves you're lost I'm gonna show you or try to help you with what to do cool practice mode by the way is something where you should be spending a lot of time a practice mode is the best way to figure out a character I really don't recommend just picking a random character and immediately jumping online because you are going to get absolutely destroyed by the first player who has any idea what they're doing. So yeah, do go into practice mode, highly recommended. And yeah, let's get into this. A couple of general settings to mention. The controls. When I talk about these types of moves, you see the front punch, back punch, front kick, back kick. Not to use the sort of PlayStation or console specific terminology. Usually front punch we refer to as one, back punch 2, front kick 3, and back kick 4. So if I say a string is 1-1-2, one, one, that means front punch, front punch, uh, high punch, or whatever it's called. I've never actually bothered back punch. Nobody ever bothers learning what the actual names of these are. But if I say 1-1-2, one, one, just know what I mean by that. Getting into other general practice settings, first thing you should definitely do, at least to my recommendation, is turn release check off. This is kind of a weird thing. This is on by default in every single NRS game. And if you are like noticing a lot of weirdness with your inputs and your special moves not coming out, it might be because you have release check turned on. Essentially what release check does is it determines whether a move comes out when you press down the button. So I have it off now. If I press one, Melina immediately attacks. If I had release check on, if I press the button and hold it, she wouldn't attack. She would only attack when I released it. So yeah, if you are going into the practice mode section of the game and you are like not getting your inputs and special moves consistently, do check the release check because like I said, it's on by default and it just leads to, in my opinion, a lot of control weirdness. I have been told off by some people who like absolutely love release check and they've sent some angry comments, but yeah, I would say for 99% of people who are not weirdos, uh, this should definitely be turned off. Don't ask me about these. These are new for this game, the input timing window especially. Shortcuts have been around and it was a mixed bag. I don't know how they work in this game, so don't ask me whether these should be turned off or on or set to long or whatever. I'll make maybe a separate video once I have a little bit more experience with the game. Other practice settings you should think about is I would recommend having frame data turned on for your character. I'll probably make a separate video on frame data because it's very important if you want to get good with the game, but just know for now you should have this turned on. And finally, for the block mode, definitely turn this on to auto. Auto block essentially means that you do an attack, and for the next attack, that was a bad example because that knocks down. But if I do something like this and I try to attack immediately after, you see my opponent is blocking. 
What having auto block on helps with is it helps you figure out what actually combos and what doesn't combo. So if I do this, that was a combo, but there might be some moves which do not actually combo and they actually reset your opponent. But if you're paying attention to the health bar, you might not notice that. But if you have auto block on, Sub-Zero will just block in and you'll be all good. That might not have been the clearest explanation, but hey, bear with me. The game's been out for like half an hour and it's late at night. Cool. So let's get into the main topic. You see all of this shit here. How do you figure out what's good and what's not? Basically, there are some things you should look for. First thing you should look for is any move that is an overhead or a low. This move is an overhead. Perfect example. This move is a low. Also another perfect example. Basically, overheads and lows allow you to open up your opponent when they're blocking. Because overhead moves must be blocked standing. Like how I am now. If I crouch block, if I do this with Melina, or my opponent is doing this, and I hit them with an overhead, they are going to get hit. And the exact same opposite is true for low attacks. If I do this and I get hit with a low attack, I'll get hit. If I do this, I'll block it. Low and overhead attacks are the main way to mix up your opponent if they're blocking a lot. So definitely do check this, the move list and do look at anything that says block type overhead. See, this one is a bit weird because this starts off with a different thing but goes into an overhead. But these are all really important moves you should consider. And from what I've seen, I don't think she has a low starter. So yeah, this sort of thing kind of varies by characters. Uh, some characters have stronger lows. Some characters have stronger overheads. Melina, it's looking like she has better overheads. Cool. Once you have sort of overheads and lows figured out, you should look at what your character's fastest poke is. The way to check this is... If you go into any of these moves and you go into advanced view, you will see the startup frame. Startup frames determine how fast an attack takes to actually start up. It kind of makes sense. The, f the lower this number is, the faster the attack is. So it's looking like, was there a one there? Was I stoned or there was a one there? This starts up in one frame. That is crazy quick and it's a mid. That can't be right, can, right? It's 13. See, that's the thing about frame data in NRS games. It can be kind of wonky, so do double check everything. Uh, but this move, 7 startup frame, is her fastest button. Fast buttons are important because if your opponent does something stupid and you block it, more often than not, this is going to be the most consistent way you can counterattack him. There is things like, it's fighting game terminology, things like punishing and all of that. I'll probably not get into this in this video. But just know that this is always your fastest button. So use this to sort of trip up your opponent and counterattack him. The same is true, usually down ones also tend to be characters' fastest buttons. So yeah, just keep that in mind as well. Cool. Once you have that figured out, do also consider whether your character has any fast moving, ideally forward advancing strings that are mid. This attack, it's kind of difficult to see, but this is a mid attack. Mid attacks are basically something that you can block both standing and crouching. But the thing about mid attacks that makes them good is they cannot be ducked. So just to give you an example, if I set Sub-Zero to not block and I set him to crouch or duck, if I do this move, this is my one, which I previously showed, it goes over his head. That's bad because if he now does an uppercut, I'm going to get my jaw kicked in, my Tarkatan jaw. If I do a mid, he's going to get hit. So mids are also very, very, very important. So do look for any attack that says mid. And like I said, if it moves the character forward, this is not a very good example of that. That's even better. 
Once you have all of this figured out, you can start looking at the special moves. So most characters are going to have a projectile. That's good. This is a standard projectile, nothing special about it. Uh, do always look at the the EX version. And do consider that Summit... Does this not have... This has to have an EX version. It does. Okay. The EX timing is sort of weird for most of these games. Um, there it is. Okay. See, it just kind of takes some practice. Some moves you need to late EX. Uh, it really depends on the move itself. I still haven't kind of figured out. But see, this is why you go into practice mode to figure this type of stuff out. So do look at the special moves. She has teleport down. Yeah, this is this thing. Man, if this game didn't have a block button, things would be like absolute chaos. And then if you EX it, she does like, what does she do? Is that all she does? Jesus. Oh, that's what she does. Nice. Uh, what does she have? She has another teleport. What, what, how does she does do the other teleport? Uh, ta -ta -ta, teleport up. Oh, it's forward. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so she has this. This launches into the combo, right? On Yeah. Okay, yeah, this is a new thing. Characters have air strings now, so we'll probably talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, see, you can just kind of try out your moves and already start figuring out what you will be doing with this character. Um, I'm trying to, like, see how to end this. It doesn't work on... Anyways, that's actually constructing combos that can wait. So yeah, do try out all the specials, low side. Now this is very important. Do look for any special moves that are low or overhead as well, just like with strings, because now I can already combine this. See, this is high overhead mid, and then this goes into another overhead. So with this, you can already start kind of thinking about how to mess with your opponent. Because you can do this. Or you can do this. And you have basically a built-in mix-up. Yeah, this is like, like I said, something you can really screw your opponent with. It sure doesn't do a lot of damage, but oftentimes these little hits add up a lot over time. So... If you constantly are like messing with your opponent doing lows and overheads, it's gonna add up and they are going to be in trouble. And that's just like kind of the stuff. Look for overhead special moves, look for low special moves, and then look for any combo starter, which is obviously her ball roll. This is something she has always had. Thankfully, it's not a low anymore because that was a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, you can already sort of construct the basic combo. You can do like this. Uh, this is a pretty good string because this moves her forward quite a lot. Uh, you just need to like sort of... And then you do whatever as an ender. Obviously this is not like high damage, but believe me, uh, most of the time it's not even about necessarily dealing the most damage. Uh, being consistent and having your combos actually counts for quite a lot. And really, as a basic starter, what is this homing ball? Air delay homing... Oh, she has... Oh, yeah, I remember this from the trailers. This is crazy. This is a crazy move. Look at this. <laughs> I'm just trying to do it. You can, like... I'll probably make an, a video on instant airing, but yeah, this is kind of crazy because you can do something like this and then if you got the timing right. Yeah, I got to turn off the long input or the input shortcuts because this is weird. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty good move as well. And then you can hold this, delay homing ball, cancel. Should I change some like fairly... Oh... That's pretty good. That's pretty good, because... Oh, man. She's definitely gonna have, like, combos with that. That is crazy. Alright, alright. 
See, we're kind of picking up the sauce, look for anything that homes, lows, mids, and all of that. And based on sort of the information you can gather here, you can sort of start putting everything together like I was doing there. This is, like I said, very basic, very sort of early, literally just picked up the game type stuff, but uh, having this type of stuff figured out is already gonna put you ahead of a lot of people online who are gonna be just like mashing randomly. So, yeah. What's the string from that? So this is just the type of stuff you just need to get back into it and just like figure it out. That's kind of crazy as well. Man, that combos. All right. Yeah, definitely don't do that on block. That's gonna suck. Uh, the ball roll is always extremely, extremely unsafe. Uh, I'll probably talk about that later as well. So yeah, that's just kind of how I go about personally figuring out what's good with a character and what's not. Oh yeah, do check the throws as well because they're kind of fun. Um, hopefully I've given you some tips on what to do with a character and how to figure out the basics. Uh, I'll continue because kind of Melina seems kind of fun. I'll just kind of continue trying her out. I'll try out the other characters and yeah, we'll eventually go online as well. So like I said, if you did enjoy this video, as always, make sure to give this a like, comment, subscribe and yeah, see you guys next time with more MK1 content. Peace out and goodbye.